Hi folks, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my top five tips for anyone considering taking on a commissioned piece of artwork. These tips are ones that I've compiled over the last few years since taking my art more seriously and are based on things I've learned through personal experience, so hopefully you'll find them useful. There are also a couple of bonus tips at the end, so make sure you watch the whole video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. We've just reached 500 subscribers, so a huge thank you to everyone who's supported me so far. I will be doing a 500 subs giveaway very soon. So whilst I'm talking you through my top five tips, I thought I'd also share the drawing process of a dog portrait that I'm doing for a friend using soft pastels on the Clairefontaine pastel matte paper that I mentioned in my recent art haul video. And I'll link that in the card above if you want to go and check it out. And because this drawing will probably take a while, I'm going to split the video into two parts. So today will be part one where I'll do the main part of the dog's face and next week in part two, I'll finish off the body and add more detail to the face whilst talking about my first impressions of the pastel matte paper as well as the drawing process as a whole. All the items I use will be listed in the description box below if you want to go and check them out. So with all that said, let's jump in with my first tip when taking on an art commission. So tip number one is to have a realistic time scale. So firstly, before I consider anything else, I always like to ask when the artwork is needed by, with a specific date. I've put this as number one simply because if the time scale isn't realistic, there's no point getting into detailed discussions on anything else if the client needs the artwork completed by tomorrow, for example. Now everyone's schedules will be different and everyone works at different rates, but you may have a full or part-time job to do, you may have children to attend to, you may have both, but whatever your situation, you have to have a realistic timescale to work in, which will allow you to do a really good job without getting too stressed and having to rush. After all, your client is paying you to do this piece of artwork, so you want to do the best job you can do on it, for them and also for yourself, your portfolio and your reputation. Your work represents your abilities as an artist, so you won't do yourself any favours in the long run if you take on a commission where you know the timescale is not going to fit in with your other responsibilities. It can be especially tempting if you really need the money for example, or if it's for a close friend who gives you puppy dog eyes and says please, but the main thing is to be realistic. So with time scale sorted, my second tip is to agree the price. And this is the bit that I personally find really difficult, but it's so important to tackle this topic early on to avoid any awkwardness later on down the line. I would suggest deciding on a set price list before you even start. Now I can't tell you how to price your artwork because there are so many variables, but I would definitely list out your prices before you meet up with your client so you can go in confidently right from the beginning and get that side of things out of the way. I would also suggest you do a bit of research into how much artists in your area with a similar skill level are asking and price accordingly. It can be really difficult if it's your first one since you don't want to overprice at this stage but equally you don't want to undervalue yourself either. Generally you'll have an idea of how long a piece of work will take and what time and materials you'll need. But remember that you can't expect people to pay for inexperience. And by that I mean that if you're just starting out, you may take longer to complete a drawing or painting than someone with a bit more experience. So my advice would be to price your artwork as a finished piece of work and not try to work out an hourly rate. If anything, I would say it's better to price lower to start with and increase your prices as your skills improve and you become more efficient, rather than price too high at the beginning, not get the work as a result and have to backtrack. That said, there will always be people out there who will expect you to do it for free or be surprised at having to pay more than a tenner for example. Some people think that because you like drawing, you'll do it for the love of art, but a lot of the time people simply don't understand the work that's involved and the time that it takes, which can be frustrating, but it's something that as an artist, you're just gonna have to get used to I'm afraid. So you've agreed the timescale, you've agreed a price, now what? Well, my third tip is to agree with your client what medium they'd like the artwork in and what the subject of the artwork will be. This tip may sound really obvious, 
but believe me, I've had a few surprises in my time. If you've watched any of my other videos on this channel, you'll know that I mostly like to draw animals and portraits, so I'm fine with pets and people, but I did receive an email once, some time back now, with a message saying, please draw Betty, photo attached, only to find that Betty was actually a car. So that, whilst funny now, was a bit awkward at the time, and in case you're wondering, no, I didn't draw Betty. My advice then would be to take on subject matter you are confident with, and don't pick that particular time to experiment with something that's new or unfamiliar to you. It's not fair on you, and it's not fair to your potential client either. In the same vein is the matter of the medium you will use for your commission. So if the client is familiar with your work, they may have seen some past paintings or drawings, especially if you post them online, and they may know that you are a watercolour artist for example, or that you work with oils, but if they've just had you recommended by a friend, they might not know. My advice would be to let them know what you can do, and see if that matches up with what they're after. Don't be tempted to take on a commission where a client is adamant they want an oil painting for example, if you've never painted in oils before in your life. Better to be really good at one thing and be well known for that one thing than to try your hand at something new and ruin whatever reputation you have just for the work or the money. So you've agreed the time scale, the price, the subject matter and the medium. Now what? Well tip 4 is probably my most valuable and important tip of the lot. The one I've learnt the hard way and that is to get a good reference picture. In my opinion, with a good reference picture, you're halfway there. It makes a huge difference to both the drawing process and the end result. Sounds obvious, right? Well, the problem is, most people don't look at a photo of their much-loved pet or family member as an artist. They look at it as someone they know and may be emotionally attached to, and that is the big difference. Personally, I have trouble drawing what I can't see, and that may be just where my skill set is at the moment. I have no doubt that there are some amazing artists out there who can fill in the gaps and draw what they can't see, but at least at the moment I can't. So for me to draw an accurate portrait, I usually ask for the photograph to be emailed to me so I can zoom in and get close up details. The photo needs to be clear, in focus and have good, preferably natural lighting. It's almost like a passport photo, ideally you'd have the full face so no silly faces unless that's what they want you to draw, and not have any main features obscured with hats, reindeer ears or similar. Without a good photo, your job is going to be a lot harder right from the start, and this can be a real problem if you're drawing a person's portrait, as it can mean the difference between a person looking like they should, and looking like someone else. So wherever you can, be clear from the start, Explain to clients nicely what you need and help them to understand why you need it. And maybe there's another photo, or maybe you could even offer to go and take a photo yourself if that's an option. I can't tell you how important that having a good reference picture is, and I have learnt this the hard way. I've struggled to mentally remove hats from animals, unblur out of focus pictures, and add details that just aren't there. It's hard and makes the whole process stressful with the added risk that the end result may not look accurate. Which brings me on to the last of my top 5 tips for successful commissions, and that is, don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to turn it down for any of the reasons above. I have had to do this a few times either because I can't fit the work in, or because the client has left it too late to put in an order. There have also been several times where the only available photos are really small and out of focus and I've not felt confident that I could do a good enough job. I really don't like letting people down and I mean I really don't like letting people down but I know from past experiences that I would only end up letting myself down if I took on commissions that I knew I wouldn't be able to complete to the best of my ability. So that's it for my top 5 tips for a successful art commission, but on to my bonus tips that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and the first bonus tip is to keep records of all correspondence and when you enter into an agreement or contract with a client to do a commission piece of artwork, I would advise you get everything in writing, either printed and filed or saved in a folder on your computer or phone. 
save everything, detail everything that you've agreed, when the artwork is to be completed by, what price has been agreed, the size of the piece, whether it's on paper or canvas, is it to be mounted or framed, all that kind of thing. Agree it before you start and keep records. You might even want to ask for a deposit at the start to ensure the client is serious about wanting the artwork. But whatever you do, write it all down with dates, times, etc. to minimise the chance of any disputes later on. You may also agree that you'll send a couple of progress pictures, which brings me on to my last bonus tip, and that is to keep in regular contact with your client and keep them updated on how the artwork is progressing. On the whole, i found that clients like to be sent maybe a couple of progress pictures over the course of the commission, so that when the finished piece is presented to them, there are no nasty surprises and they generally know what to expect. So that's it for my top 5 tips for a successful commission. Obviously though, these are only tips that I've come up with through my experiences. There may be things that I've left out and if that's the case and you've had some experiences with commissions that you'd either like to share with us or some tips that you can also share with us in the comments box, please do, I'd really appreciate it and it will no doubt help anyone else who's clicked on this video for a few tips and some advice. So please share those with us in the comments box and hopefully you found what I've said helpful and you've enjoyed as well watching the first part of this dog drawing. I have to say I am really loving doing this. This little dog has got such a beautiful face and beautiful expression and thankfully I have got a good reference picture and it's all going so far so good. So hopefully you've enjoyed it anyway and if you don't want to miss out on part two which will be coming out next Tuesday on this channel then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye!